Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how to match exponential graphs with their functions. Uh, it's one of the harder topics in Algebra 1, so you really want to take some notes, pause the video, and try to use those notes when you get similar questions. It will help you a lot. So, you're working on IXL Algebra 1, uh, X2, match exponential functions and graphs. So, basically, the regular proce procedure uh, to solve these so sort of questions is about following three rules about a, b, and c values in the general form of an exponential equation or exponential function. So now that I just mentioned that word, if you cannot tell whether a graph is a function or not, please click the link at the top, watch the vertical line test. After that video, you're going to have the knowledge to decide whether the graph you see is just a relation or a function. Now, let's get back to our uh, assignment. So the general form, the general form of an exponential equation is y equals a times b to the power of x plus c. These a, b, and c's are going to be numbers, and we are going to look at those numbers to decide how or which graph is going to be uh, the equation, or which equation is going to be the given graph. So let's get started the first rule is the easiest one we just look at the value of c in the equations so that c value tells us about the horizontal asymptote <coughs> i'll explain what it means so at y equals c level we are going to have our horizontal asymptote now looking at the graph our horizontal asymptote uh is below the x-axis. That dotted line you see is called a horizontal asymptote because it is horizontal and the asymptote is the concept of asymptote it's like the boundary of your function. Your function, your graph cannot touch that dotted line, it cannot cross that dotted line. It, get, it can get as closer as possible uh, but it cannot touch that dotted line. That's the boundary of your function. And that boundary is at negative 2 on the y-axis. Looking at the y-axis, look at that number over here. That's negative 2, which is why the horizontal asymptote, uh, you can see it as y equals negative 2 or horizontal asymptote equals negative 2. Also, looking at that, our c value is going to be negative 2. I've never seen as c equals negative 2, by the way. But just so you know, the number in the end is going to be negative 2. That leaves us with the first and the fourth option. Okay, now moving on to the second rule. The second rule is another easy rule to follow. It's about the A value. Okay, it's the first number on the right side of our equation. So we have two options. That number is either going to be a positive number or a negative number. Let me see. Okay, so if that A value is greater than zero, if that A value is less than zero. So These two tells us if our graph is going to be above the dotted line or below the dotted line. I think you can say which one is supposed to be above the dotted line. Uh, if your A value, the first number on the right side is positive, graph is supposed to be above the dotted line or the horizontal asymptote. Uh, if that number is negative, then graph should be below the dotted line or below the horizontal asymptote. Now look at your graph. The blue graph, the blue curve is below the dotted line. My first number on the right side should be a negative number. So 
I'm looking at the numbers that I have left with. One of them is positive 3, cannot be my answer. The other one is negative 3, that should be my answer. Now, the third rule is the harder one to memorize because it has like two components, but I'll simplify that formula for you by just mentioning the first half of that formula because the second half is exact opposite. And you can just use that first half to decide which answer should be your answer. So let me try to word it in a way that everyone can understand. Okay, so that third rule is about that number in the parentheses. Looking at these numbers, they're all positive. They're, they're all uh, positive. That's one thing. They're always going to be positive. Uh, two options. That number is either going to be between 0 and 1, which is going to be usually a fraction, uh, but sometimes you can see it in the form of a decimal but in many occasions it's going to be a fraction. So if this is the part that I want to memorize, okay, this is the part that I use to decide if the graph matches with my equations. So if that B value is between 0 and 1, I'm not talking about what happens if the B value is greater than 1, because if I just use this phrase, the rest is going to come easily. If that B value is like 0.5 or one third or one fourth, one fifth, then as we go right, let me see, as we go right, the graph is going to get closer to the horizontal asymptote. And then there is the second half of this explaining what happens if the B is greater than 1. It's exact opposite. Don't worry about that. So this is easier for me to remember because if I'm talking about increasing, decreasing functions, in my mind I'm just talking about the graph moves from left to right. So that's my default thinking mechanism. So looking at this, as I go from left to right, the graph is getting further away from the dotted line. But let's just try to use this, uh, this statement over here. Is the graph getting closer to the dotted line? Because th this is what it says if the B value is a fraction that is less than 1. Is it getting closer to the dotted line as I go from left to right? It's getting further away. So this statement is not applicable in that situation. That means my B value, the number in the parentheses, is not going to be less than 1. It's going to be more than 1. So that's just another confirmation that this is going to be my answer. Now, in the next question, I'm going to show you another way that you can use. And many of you are going to be more familiar with that technique uh, rather than this right here. Because this looks complicated and it's not easy to remember, especially when you get into uh, this topic a lot. It's Many of you are going to forget about this rule. So I'll show you another method for the third one, but I really think that the first one and second one is easier, and they are easier to remember as well. Okay, now let's submit this and move on to another example. So the first question took nine minutes. This is not going to take that much. Okay, now let's get a little uh, faster. Now, step one, look at that. My graph should have a dotted line at negative 1 on the vertical axis. So that's at positive 1, the dotted line. This could be my answer. This could be my answer. That cannot be my answer because both of them, uh, in their, their equation should end with plus 1 because of the dotted lines. Now, looking at the sec, think about the second rule. What was it about? It was about the A value, right? The first number on the right side. If this number is positive, a graph above the dotted line or above the horizontal asymptote. Now, this one here is graphed, the graph is above the horizontal asymptote, the graph is below the horizontal asymptote, 
that cannot be my answer this right here cannot be the answer which leaves me with this okay so I don't need to test uh, I don't need to show you the easier rule for the third one because if we, the first one and second one is always is usually gonna tell you what your answer is going to be now let's just skip a level because there's no difference between the B values there's no point of me showing you the easier way oh it's the same type of question and there's no other level okay they are gonna be the same all the time let's just focus on this one then I cannot skip a level okay uh, this one here negative 2 should be the horizontal asymptote that's not right that's not right because of the dotted line now the graph is below the dotted line my a value is gonna be negative there's only one with negative a value that should be my answer I'm looking for an answer where we cannot just use the first two to decide which one is our answer probably this could be one of those okay start from the horizontal asymptote I need a horizontal line at positive six so could be my answer could be my answer could be my answer and could be my answer okay we couldn't cross out any of the options now the second rule is about the a value so that's a positive that means shade above the graph above the dotted line so this one here shaded above the dotted line shaded above the dotted line shaded below and below now I like this question better because I get to show you the easier way uh, to decide which one is supposed to be your graph uh, the rule is pretty simple for this question particularly but let me show you the other way first and then I'll tell you what you can do with the rule so okay looking at the graphs this right here is my first option second option right now find a different point on these graphs like this this one here is probably one seven or very close to seven we cannot tell that exact point right now this one here is like negative one six it's not exact I can see that the second one is not exact for sure but it's gonna be pretty close so oh let's let's not do that let's let's plug in the same number for X let's plug in one so this graph goes like that right so basically if I plug in one my value is gonna be like greater than 10 right the Y value the answer is gonna be greater than 10 let's plug in one for X and see what happens in our original equation Y equals one-third to the first power plus six this is what happens so the answer is gonna be six point three repeating six point three repeating is gonna be my answer if I just do one-third plus six and which one do you think is gonna be the answer I, this one is greater than ten this one is closer to seven close to seven so of course this is going to be my answer because obviously 11 or like that's probably like 20 or something on the graph and my answer is supposed to be 6.3 repeating so the first one is gonna be my answer so this is what you can do instead of applying the third rule because that's again is complicated but in this case it's not as complicated as you think it might be because that's a value between 0 and 1 right so as I go from left to right so as I go from left to right uh, left to right the graph will get closer to horizontal asymptote that's the part that I keep in my mind I don't worry about the other health uh, so looking at the graph from left to right this is getting closer to the dotted line from left to right this, get, get, this is not getting closer to the dotted line so that would be my answer so that's your two A's and let's do one more okay negative six is my horizontal asymptote uh, this could be my answer all of these could be the answer that didn't help 
Now let's work on our A value. Graph below the horizontal asymptote. So that is not below the asymptote, not below the asymptote, yes and yes. Okay, now let's check the third rule out. Uh, looking at my B value in the parentheses, this tells me as I do this movement on the graph uh, closer to HA, horizontal asymptote. That's what I want to see on the graph. As I move from left to right, I should get closer to my dotted line. I had two options left. This right here, from left to right, it's getting closer to the dotted line, but it's not going to touch. And this one, as I go from left to right, it's getting further away from the dotted line. That means my answer is going to be this right here. Uh, again, this is a complicated topic at first, but as you get familiar with the first and second rule, you're going to figure out many of these questions uh, without any help or critical thinking. The third rule could be harder uh, with, uh, on some occasions. In those cases, you can plug in a number and see if that number, that x and y value, is on your graph. Or you can think about the b values. Uh, let's just do another practice. Look at your graph's behavior from left to right. Is it getting closer to the dotted line? It's not getting closer. That means the b value is greater than 1. b is greater than 1. So it's either the first or the second one because these two are between 0 and 1. They tell you as you go from left to right, you got to get closer to the dotted line, but that's not the case with our graphs. So horizontal asymptote is at positive 3. Uh, these are both the same. Negative, shade below, or graph below the dotted line, shade or graph above the dotted line. Uh, our graph is below the dotted line, so that means our option, the answer is going to be this one right here. That's how quickly you can solve these questions as you get familiar with uh, the three rules that you have. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. And comment below if you think the video helped you out with your assignments. And I'll see you in another video.